What up, guys? It's late. It's like almost two in the morning. I'm on call tonight, and uh, this video is a couple days overdue. But uh, I, I have a student who I've known for a long time who just had a birthday on Monday, and happy birthday to her. And I wanted to share her story with you guys to inspire you guys and motivate you guys to be all you can be because you guys can be so much more than what you are. And when you get out of this mindset of settling and making excuses and you start looking for ways to not be a problem, to find problems, but to find solutions and to, to be great, you can start being great and you can start dominating. So I'm going to tell you her story so you guys can be inspired in this late night for me and maybe early morning when you're seeing this. <laughs> um, but here we go. So this student, uh, we met 10 years ago now. And... Uh, when I met her, she wanted to be an occupational therapist, actually. And she was studying to be an occupational therapist. That was her major. She was doing that whole thing. And then she was actually uh, in a position where she wasn't, she didn't have a lot of funds for school. Her parents didn't have the money. And so she was kind of trying to find her way uh, to pay for school. And to pay for school and simultaneously get job experience, she took a job working uh, with children uh, doing developmental behavior stuff. And it was interesting because... A lot of when you, I compare her journey with a lot of other um, students, it, the stark contrast in prioritizing things and getting things done and doing what it takes. And the job she ended up taking was a job in the field that she wanted to go into. The problem was that job actually paid her less than the gas money it took her to drive there to and from. So she was actually essentially paying to go to work and to do her thing and to get job experience. And what I would say to you guys about that, and it was interesting because I went out to actually visit the student and spend a weekend and look at the school and talk about the school and do different things. And we were driving in her car and I kept looking at the gas thing saying, listen, the, the, the gas looks a little low. So we're running on empty. We're going to run out of gas. We're out here in the desert. We're going to run out of gas. And she's like, no, it'll be fine. And I ended up finally pulling the car over and filling the tank up. Uh, and later on come to find out that the reason she didn't want to stop for gas was because she didn't have the money to fill up the tank. And so she was going to let us run out of gas and die in the desert uh, because she was embarrassed that she didn't have the money um, to fill up her tank. And I think what that story, when I first met her, illustrates is the willingness to sacrifice and to prioritize things. I feel like so many students, I meet with you guys, and I'm doing a lot of coaching sessions right now, and I meet with so many of you guys, and you you haven't made up your mind to fully commit to your goals, to say, I'm willing to sacrifice and put aside comfort. I'm willing to prioritize what hurts, right? What isn't in my most immediate best interest. I'm not going to do the video games. I'm not going to do the hanging out with friends. I'm going to focus on on my career building and getting where I want to go. And that kind of dedication is what it takes. You have to be willing to essentially pay to go work for somebody else, to put in hours. Um, and she was working Saturdays too for this job in addition. So she was spending her entire Saturday at a job knowing that every hour she spent there, she was actually losing money doing. And if you guys aren't willing to make those kind of sacrifices and those kind of priorities for your medical school dreams, you're not going to get there. You're slipping because other students are making those sacrifices, getting stuff done. But where are you at? Right. They're doing the things that are required, the extracurriculars. And I get so many students who tell me, oh, well, I can't afford to volunteer. I can't afford to do extracurriculars. Well, people who want medical school figure out how to get the extracurriculars. They figure out how to how to achieve, how to do the things required to get to medical school. Those who don't, right, who make the excuses, who aren't willing to be uncomfortable and make the correct prioritization, they don't get there. And so that was the, the origin story uh, for when we first met. Um, and then uh, I continued uh, to know her, and she actually uh, changed jobs. She changed schools, changed jobs. She was going to school full-time, and then she actually had changed her interest from occupational therapy to being a behavior analyst. And so she got a job doing that full-time. So she was working a full shift, full-time, full-time job, going to school full-time, doing both in two separate cities with a super long commute in between. 
and she was doing both at a very high level. She was excelling in the classroom, and also in her job, she actually was working so well and doing and, and going so above and beyond in her job that she actually became the youngest ever uh, lead therapist and supervisor at this company. And she was, in fact, the only non-board certified behavior analyst at this company that held that supervisorial position. And it's incredibly, if, if you guys are, you guys know what board certified is, right? There's board certified physicians. When there's a board and it's certified, it means it's official, it's legit, and you can't hold these positions unless you're board certified. Well, she was such a top performer. She was so over-delivering in everything she did that they actually allowed her to hold that position without being board certified. That's, <laughs> that's the kind of dedication she had to her career. She then was able to move up in the ranks and eventually become a regional director. So now, not only did she supervise a singular team, she supervised other supervisors who happened to be board certified personnel. So here she is, a young 20 something with no board certification, supervising people who are fully board certified. And I think for you guys, this is particularly important because A, how she got there. How do you go from being a lowly bottom of the totem pole team member to being the top of the totem pole and being above people who who are, have 20 years experience on you, who have degrees on you, how do you supersede them? You do it by over-delivering and seeking absolute perfection. How many of you guys are content with turning something in? I meet with all with you guys. You guys have been doing research. You have no publications. I'm like, what's going on? Oh, well, you know, I don't really like research. So I just go there and I phone it in. Or, you know, you have a job and you have all these experiences and you don't make an impact. You don't make a difference. You don't deliver anything. You're just there taking up space, right? You're not a perfectionist. It doesn't matter to you. You don't, you aren't obsessive about the quality of the work that you turn in at places. And you think it's nothing, right? Because you're like, oh, well, such and such is doing that. So why can't I turn in that kind of work? It doesn't matter what other people are doing. Because what other people are doing is what the average person does. If you want to rise to the top, if you want to be the cream of the crop, you have to be exceptional. And you have to strive to always over-deliver. You can't be, it can't be average time. It's got to be over-delivering and perfection. And that's how you rise up. I think the other thing that's meaningful about that part of the story is that so often you guys think you have to wait until you're a medical student or a physician to make a difference. You guys think that when a research position or whatever extracurricular position says we prefer someone who has this experience, that that's not overcomable. I think that's a word. <laughs> it absolutely is. But what it takes is being a person who can deliver at such a high level that people ignore all the rest. And I constantly say all the time, production trumps all. If you can produce and produce at a high level... All the other fluff fades away. And it's like, no, 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 no. Don't matter what, whatever you say, he's producing, put him on. That's how it goes. And so I encourage you guys, be a person who makes a difference. Don't just be a member of the team, right? When stuff needs to be done, just get it done and do it. Don't look, oh, well, that's Jim's job. That's Jane's job, whatever. No, no, no. It's my job. I'm going to get it done. It's going to be me, <laughs> right? It's going to be me. And to bring this all together, right, I'm telling this story. And why am I telling this story? I hope that you guys can learn from this example of this great person who did these great things and understand that this person didn't have any special advantage. This person didn't have any special smarts, didn't have any special resources, didn't have any special access. She went out and she got it. She made herself career. That... I. That's what she did. I know she's not pre-med, but that story is what you guys got to be. You guys got to be striving to just be excellent. And you guys to be doing what's required to be excellent. And the uh, interesting part about this for me, and the, and, and the reason I wanted to tell this story was as a tribute to her, uh, because I, I think this, she's a very special lady, and I thought she was so special, in fact, that I married her. And uh, this is my wife's story. And <laughs> um, I, I'm proud to tell this story on her birthday time-ish. I'm a couple days late. I've been working. So Lindsay just asked me why I'm awake. Well, I'm awake 
because I'm on call right now. I'm in between cases um, in the operating room right now, so I thought I'd come down here and, and film a video. But I'm so proud of my wife and everything she is to me, to my kids, and, and to herself. But I, I want to ask you guys, right? <laughs> if you guys can understand the struggle of brokenness that my wife and I faced coming through all this stuff and the tough decisions and maxing out credit cards... I can remember. <laughs> you guys don't know what it is to apply to medical school. It's expensive. You guys don't know what it is to have all these, like, whatever we needed, we, we would just credit card, credit card, and you rack up tens of thousands of dollars of credit card debt, getting done, making those decisions, sacrificing, saying, listen, whatever happens will happen, but we've got to make the decision that we're going to invest in ourselves and in our future and get places. And so through all that struggle, I'm just so excited that we stayed together. Um, 10 years man it's crazy and she's had her birthday so i wanted to put this video together for you guys to learn what it takes to be truly successful and i'm not saying and listen clearly what i'm saying my wife is not some special person but what she was was willing to sacrifice willing to prioritize the proper things to see what could be in her future career and see how these things would impact the future and then she was a person who always sought to be perfect and more perfect and over deliver. And a person who said, if a job needed to be done, I'll do it. Didn't say, oh, that's not my role. That's not my responsibility. That's such a job. Just took it on and did it. And I encourage you guys, if you want to be successful as a pre-med, if you want to get to medical school, that's what it takes. Honestly, that's it. I look around at the people who are successful in life and anything they do. And it's people who, have, or who are persistent and who strive, who have a high standard, and go and get it. Like, I, If you look at all these people who you think are amazing, and you really look at what it took for them to be successful, it's going to be those core ingredients. So I encourage you, stop freaking settling. Stop saying, oh, I'll get by. I don't know if I really, really need that activity. I don't really feel like doing that. I'm just going to, uh, 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 and cut corners. Get the job done. Get the job done. So that's all I got to say <laughs> about that. Lindsay, what are you doing awake? Why are you asking me why I'm awake? What are you doing awake? I, I'm, at, I'm, on, I'm at work. What are you doing awake at, what, 2 in the morning? But uh, thank you guys anyway for uh, listening. And uh, <laughs> we are going uh, live tonight uh, for an actual uh, lecture on the whiteboard. Actually, we'll be, I think we'll be on the whiteboard tonight. Uh, we'll be, no, we will not be on the whiteboard tonight. I'll be at the hospital. So we'll be live tonight from the hospital. Um, we're going to be doing 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, going live tonight on my Facebook page. Um, I'll see you guys there. And, uh, Lindsay, you're very welcome for the share. Studying at 2 in the morning. Lindsay, you better have a test, like, coming up this week. That is super dis. 2 in the morning is too late to be studying. How are you going to function tomorrow? Come on, Lindsay. Come on. So are my eyes narrow enough? I just like noticed that. Like, I must be tired. Like the bags are filling up my eyes. Um, anyway, you guys know it. Online courses, www.premanproductivity.com. I got my YouTube channel, free stuff. Check that out. And uh, as always, look for events in your area, all that kind of good stuff. This week, uh, I'll have more information about it tonight because now it's like morning time. Tonight, <clears throat> I'm, I'm running a Black Friday. Uh, discount special because you guys keep emailing me. I've gotten like probably a dozen emails from you guys asking about a Black Friday uh, discount. So there will be a Black Friday discount um, starting um, tomorrow after the live stream or tonight after the live stream uh, going through the weekend. So check that out. More information on that coming tonight. And uh, I will see you guys in a few hours. I got to go back to work and you guys got to go to sleep. Oh, Lindsay, you had two on Monday, so what are you studying at two in the morning right now for? we get, we got to talk about this, Lindsay. we got to figure this out. Anyway, have a good night, guys. I will see you in a few hours. Facebook Live. We're going to be talking about critical analysis and how you can be a better critical thinking thinker to get stuff done and be more analytic in your approach to getting to medical school and in your general life as a student to get ahead. All right, see you guys later.